Before we go into the nitty gritty of the video regarding the mill, I've got a sticker board. It's finely mounted and I've got some stickers to pop later. The first sticker I ever received was off Kevin at Mr. Factotum's workshop. I assume most of you have visited his channel. Uh, incredibly interesting bloke, I've got to be honest. He's built locomotives and he's in the middle at this moment in time in building a water tender. I'm following it with great interest. Uh, I've always considered that sort of work well beyond my ability. But watching what Kevin does make me wonder one day perhaps I could build something. But I don't think it's going to ever turn out as good as his. And the second sticker I received was from Dan. From House of Broken Dobbs Things. Dan's amazing character, absolutely amazing. Um, the amount of emails that we've got through back and forth to each other, I wouldn't like to count. I'm just glad we're not using the telephone. He is, at this moment in time, got a nice little project, which is a Lewis Shaper. I believe he was a kit from the 40s, maybe. Following that with great interest. I love restoring old machines and bringing them back into working order, and I'm sure he's going to do an excellent job on it. And he likes a lot of participation from uh, anyone watching, and he loves suggestions. Give him a look out. So there they are, all nicely placed on the board. First come, first serve basis. And I know I've got a couple more coming. I think Retro Mechanica, and I know that Mix Workshop is sending me some. And as soon as they arrive, they'll be up on the board with the rest. So let's get down to business with the milling machine. When we last left off, I was saying that there was a couple of things I needed to sort out. And one of them was drilling the hole in what I'm classing as the fixed element. As I said, that part needed to be fixed to the shaft, uh, which will allow the rotation, which is done. Albeit, the grub screw I cut was a little short, but it's holding in place. And if I can swivel around, you can see that, obviously, when I turn the other side, it turns with the shaft. Now, I'm not going to say this was a walk in the park. It's caused me quite a little bit of issues. Mostly because of my poor machining, I think we shall call it. The plate, which has arrived, and is only held on at this moment in time with two little Allen bolts. Um, when the magnet is engaged, it goes on with such force, I've tried to pry bar to get it back off. But... It would not allow me to rotate the shaft. It slipped. If you look on the back of the disc, which is in contact with a fixed element, you see I've used a bit of Sharpie. Almost the same as you'd use um, marking blue to find out contact area. And initially, when I was trying to make everything work, and even though I couldn't pull it off, it would not turn the shaft. It was the machining. That had failed and I only had a very very small surface area in contact there so I had to take everything back apart and try and machine everything and it worked out that when I'd machined this you can probably see it I left a tiny tiny little lip just there and that's what it was sat on it's working and I'll show you it working but at this moment in time um, I think it needs refining and I need to re-look at the design and what's involved on the cars and see if I can replicate that. So from my seated position, if I drop that over the shaft, I hope you can see that there's a small air gap there. This is one of the things I didn't realise. This needs to be as close as possible. Even though this magnet has got a massive holding force, um, if you open that gap up too much, you lose it all. But if I turn this end with sound effects, you can see nothing's happening the opposite end. So if the motor was connected via the belt on there now and the motor was running, it would not have any effect. What I've had to do is connect that by a rather dodgy cable into my permanent power supply. And if you've watched previous videos, you know inside of the column there is a 12 volt 30 amp stepped power supply in there, which was put in 
specifically for this reason. We roll back around. Now, that's turning. Nice and free. And if I turn on the power supply, so now we have lights. And you'll notice that if I turn on the opposite side, we've actually got rotation. It does hold good. Obviously, if I'm rotating this end by hand, I've got enough force on there, but I'm not completely happy with the loading. And again, if I turn it off, you'll find that that spins free. So the principle works, but there is a flaw. Um, I don't think I'm getting 100% load on this at this moment in time. I think some, I've done something wrong, and I'm not really sure. I've prepared a little lardy dardy gram. This is what I'm doing here. The magnet is uh, just shown as a section. You've got the fixed element and where the gear is. So that's basically that, that's that. One fits into the other and when it's assembled, it's close to the magnet, but it's that air gap there. Now, on a car, what they have is the clutch plate on the outside which is spring loaded. You've got the main drive um, multi V belt pulley, which fits inside of the magnet. And when the magnet is energized, it pulls this clutch plate up against there. Now the clutch plate and the actual uh, drive pulley has a series of slots all the way around it. And what I was thinking on the lines of, so I've already cut one out, but I haven't put the slots in, was to pop that onto there, which is at this moment in time a bit of an interference fit, but it will just about go on. And I've tried that in position, and when I switched the magnet on, again, I couldn't pull that part off, but there was no friction at all holding. I could just spin it almost as free as if the magnet was off. So I'm wondering whether or not slots or holes between the two plates will allow this element to pull it against there tight and with the added surface area give me the extra friction or if that fails do I need to put friction pads of some sort in this area again like I said it's not be completely straightforward it does work I have proven it's working but I'm not comfortable with it. It's not as good as I was hoping. So back at the middle machine, you can see the, the basic idea I'm thinking of. That's got to fit on there, close to the face of the magnet. Either slots or holes going through there, so that when the moving element goes on, when the magnet pulls, we get full surface contact between the two. Like I said, if I switch the magnet on at this moment in time, at this moment in time the one plate pulls all the way on I cannot pull that off we've got no rotation because all the magnetic force is going into the thin plate back off once she pops back out I'll to get it back off again and if I put this on which obviously fits on there free running and then switch back on again over to that side we have rotation and I've held the other side and tried to turn and I cannot pull this off it's physically impossible like I said I've had pry bars through it need a bit more thought if anyone out there have any experience of this or know anything about the way these clutches work just give me a shout and let me know sideline the retractable blind still working i hope you all enjoyed thanks for all the new subscribers all the comments and likes um, i really really appreciate it as i said this channel started as a mistake but i'm enjoying what's happening see you all soon